Greetings and welcome. I'm speaking with Melody Edwards, who's a pediatric PT. Melody, can you say hi? <laughs> hi, everybody. So the first thing is, is can you share your background? How long have you been doing this? And uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. I've been practicing 37 years. And for all of it, except for about two years, I've done pediatrics. And I love it. And um, if I only had one tool in my therapy toolbox, it would be the reflex integration stuff. It has been the most valuable thing I've ever learned in my entire career. Yeah, movement is so key to our well-being. And one thing about these rhythmic movements and reflexes is that they are what we are designed with to develop in the first place. And I think that's the main reason why they work so well. But you're going to tell us how they're working for you. Because that's a big thing to say, wow, I have all these tools. And if I could only pick one, I would pick these uh, reflex integration tools. Uh, so reflexes and uh, the rhythmic movements are um, also reflex integration tools. So tell us more. Let me just go to this first slide. So um, you have a whole case study written up about this young child here. Um, tell us about what happened in this case. So Tate came to me after he had already received nine months of physical therapy. And he was 13 months old. And usually at that age, don't see a ton of progress because they're already walking around. It's hard to get them to stabilize that shoulder girdle with their hands on the floor and that kind of stuff. So I wasn't real optimistic with this guy. He had um, a left lean that at best was 30 degrees and a right rotation. Just real straightforward torticollis with um, the right rear head flattened from that position. and. Um, happened to be taking your second level brain and sensory foundation course and learn some new things. I was absolutely utterly amazed that just in uh, two months, that almost complete resolution of that total colic, and he's still doing good now. I checked with his mom yesterday just to make sure all was well, and it is, and it was because of the the, um, using those reflexes so the body automatically wants that head in midline and automatically wants those arms working. And so that was just amazing to me to get resolution so quickly on a child that old for the diagnosis of total college. It seems to me from doing this a long time that the brain and the body really take these movements um, and can utilize them. And his family was kind of an average family for using the reflexes. They weren't like just doing tons of them. So I feel like he's a very representative case of what can be done when you have these tools in your tool bags. They were just kind of doing it two or three times a day for a few minutes. And his automatic underlying hardwired reflexes just kicked into action and helped his body function the way it was supposed to. Fabulous. So I just want to make clear for those who are listening, because my slide is um, not very detailed, but this little boy was 13 months old. And you said his torticollis was resolved in two months. So I just want to make sure everybody got that. Thank you for oh. teaching me those tools, because I have 12 torticollis cases on my caseload right now. And it's just amazing how much resolution we can get just tapping into that body's innate hardwire reflex system. It's just wonderful. Good. And I'm so glad because that's a really good point that it's, this is not just a special case. Like these movements are uh, critical for all of us, really, for our development. And I think w one of the things I just am amazed about is that when we don't receive them when we're infants, or if there's a case like an injury with torticollis or something like that that gets in the way of our development, we can use them later on, way past the age of infancy, and they still provide tremendous uh, support and integration. So anyway, well, thank you, Melody. And tell us about this young man. So this was a, must be a five-year-old, right, a kindergartner? 
Yes. He was five years old, and, and this is such a typical child that um, you see. You know, they, they don't have any diagnosis of, you know, like cerebral palsy or missing limb or anything like that. They get to kindergarten, and they're just not thriving on the playground. This little guy was kind of scared to be out there with the other kids, and it just because he physically was quite uncoordinated. And so he came to me, and we started some of the basic, just passive rhythmic movements. This was um, four years ago. Didn't have the tools that I have now, but had some of those basic ones. And his family was really good about doing them five nights a week for like 10 to 15 minutes. And um, in six months, he on the Peabody Developmental Motor Skills, he went from a negative 2.6 standard deviation below the mean to negative 0 0.41. That is just unheard of. And his age equivalency, the first time I tested him, was 22 to 28 months, depending on which subtest you look at. And it jumped clear up to 52 to 71 months. So there's three subtests in this growth motor one, and so they were in that range. And I noticed on your um, slide there, um, Sonia, that his age equivalency increased much more than six months. You know what? I'm going to put this up on the screen. It's okay. So in six months, he gained 30 months in six months. Okay. So in six months, he gained. Um, he gained third. Yeah. And he also learned how to ride a bike. He was he couldn't even ride a trike when I saw him. And he learned how to ride a bicycle. It, it just was amazing to me when you just settle down those fear reactions and that how the body can just blossom. Because when these kids are the moral reaction is prominent, the fear paralysis response is, um, is active. They just don't develop right. They're always in that flight or fight mode. And I see this type of child a lot. And I think they're overlooked a lot and become behaviors in school when actually the reflexes are just creating a problem for them. And with some attention, it can be turned around quickly. It can just change their lives so dramatically. And it doesn't really take that long. It's just an amazing shift for them. And I see these kids more and more. And I think these children so often fall through the cracks because they're, you know, they're cognitively intact. They don't have a physical diagnosis. They're just not quite right. And I'm so thankful to have this tool in my toolbox to help these kids thrive. Right. Um, it's, it makes a huge global change when we can work with things like fear paralysis and moro reflex and calm those reflexes down. And you're right, it's, it's so life-changing for the kids. So let's talk about, here you have a case study where there's this little girl has severe uh, cerebral palsy. Can you talk about this? Yes. This is the first child that I really applied it to that was severely involved. And um, she was six years old when we started this. And I had already been seeing her for a year prior to that, and she still did not have head control. She could, when you were holding her and sitting, she would try and get her head upright, but was not able to. She was not able to get it upright and hold it there. And so her mom was really willing to give this a great shot, and we just basically did passive rhythmic movement. And she did them um, um, six nights a week. And in one year, she was able not only to hold her head upright, but she was able to sit in ring, ring sitting where their legs are um, not straight ahead of them, but kind of in a circle in front of them. Mm -hmm. And she was propping on her hands. And she could hold her head up for five seconds while looking around the room. That is so huge to make that big of a jump right? in one year that had not been able to be um, elicited in the years prior to that with the therapy that she had had. And um, 
the AT&R, the asymmetrical tonic neck reflex, which was just so dominant in her posture before we started this, started to integrate and she could get her hand to her mouth and she was so excited to suck her thumb for the first time. And she could get, um, we would put food on her hand, you know, like a peanut butter or something like that. And she would have so much fun sucking that off of there and she could get toys in her mouth. It really increased the quality of her life. And she has definitely improved since then. But I was so amazed. It really made me a believer way back in 2012. These reflexes work across this continuum of the severely involved child to those who are basically typical and just struggling a little bit to kids who were normal and fell out of the tree and broke their arm and now their fear reflexes are active. And it's just amazing how it works on so many. It, it is the best tool in my toolbox, no doubt about it.